That's 75 billions with a B for every single page. Talk about value here. If you work in academia, you know that the quality of your papers can make or break your career. Good papers in particular can be worth a lot, in academic terms first and foremost, but in financial terms as well. Maybe a good paper will lend you a tenure track position, guaranteeing you a job for life. Or maybe it can be turned into a patent, which will pay you a royalty for the rest of your days. Or it may contain an idea so good that it will take over the market and make you a millionaire. So just how big can we dream as academics and as PhD students? What is the most valuable paper in history? And how much is it worth? It's obviously difficult to put a precise value on this, but I would argue that's $1.53 trillion at time of recording. Can you imagine to write a single paper, 20 pages, 15 without citation and appendix, being worth $1.5 trillion? That's 75 billions, with a B, for every single page. Talk about value here. If you don't know me already, my name is Eric, and I am a third-year PhD student in mathematics at the University of Oxford. Here on my channel, I normally talk about my life as a graduate student, about PhD admissions, and my field of study, network science. For example, here in this video, I tell the story of an amazing experiment that proved the conjecture of the six degrees of separation in social networks. If you find these topics interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell. It really helps me out. But now, let's dive right into it. So what could a single research paper contain that is so valuable? Well, the title of the paper is the anatomy of a large-scale hypertextual web search engine, which might not be an immediate giveaway. But what if I told you that the two authors were computer science PhD students at Stanford and that the paper was published in 1998? Still nothing? Well, their names were Sergey Brin and Larry Page, and if that still doesn't ring a bell, the abstract leaves no room for second guesses. As the first six words read, in this paper, we present Google. The very company you're using right now, the search engine that we all know and love, and one of the biggest and most valuable companies in the planet, all of this can be traced back to this seemingly obscure paper published nearly 25 years ago by two unknown, at least at the time, PhD students. To understand what the paper contains, and how Google was started, we need to think back at the state of digital technology in 1998. Computers were experiencing a rapid rise during this time, and the internet was following suit. This new technology was starting to be adopted by the general public after universities, the military, and governments had developed it and implemented it in previous years. Also, a few years earlier, Sir Tim Berners-Lee had invented the protocol for sharing documents and navigating across them, the World Wide Web. And it took the world by storm. People and companies from all over the world were adding new web pages, the bricks that make up websites, at unimaginable speed. This expansion was starting the information era and was opening new possibilities, as anyone with just an internet connection could access virtually unlimited information. The problem was how to sort all of this material and how to access the relevant information. Because each person and company were creating their own website, a central control structure that could provide a list of all content did not exist. Instead, pages were connected to each other by hyperlinks, those blue underlined words you can see every time you surf the web which allowed you to navigate from one page to the other. The idea was that if two pages had similar content, they could link to each other and complement their information. However, this approach was slow and cumbersome. If you want to experience what it was like, I suggest playing the Wikipedia game. This game involves navigating from a starting page to a target page on the Wikipedia website, only using hyperlinks. It can be a fun game to play, 
But if you're actually looking for information, you would probably end up throwing your computer out of the window. So the idea of search engines was born. A piece of software that could scan the entire World Wide Web and return the results to a user. Instead of navigating to a certain web page, we navigate to the search engine and we search for what we need. Then the search engine would return a list of web pages that are interesting for our query. That's what Google still does today, after more than 25 years. The approach of Brin and Page was to combine a crawler and a scoring system. A crawler is basically a computer program that analyzes the entire World Wide Web, visiting each page, scanning its content, taking a few keywords to classify it, moving on to the next page, and repeat. Crawlers are fairly simple programs that were already widely used at the time the paper was published. The scoring part is what makes their algorithm so innovative and interesting. Previously to their work, most search engines were keyword-based. Basically, the more times and the most prominently the web page contained your search keywords, the higher it would appear in the search results. But Page and Brin decided to use the network structure of the World Wide Web to their advantage. The fundamental idea is to realize that some web pages are more important and authoritative than others, even if they treat the same exact topic. When we try to understand what makes some pages more important, we encounter a phenomenon very common in citation networks. Web pages where the information is presented well and clearly will often be linked by other web pages on the same topic. Think about this. How many times have you seen blog posts link into Wikipedia articles on the same topic? I see that all the time. And that's because Wikipedia has grown into a very reputable, high quality source on many topics. So anyone creating a web page or blog post is willing to cite them because they trust the quality of their content. Let's think of the following scenario. If we have a trustworthy, authoritative, important web page A that contains a hyperlink to another web page B, it's very likely that B is going to be an important and authoritative web page itself. This is because the owners of web page A have a vested interest to keep the sources for their work trustworthy and authoritative as well. This means that because page B is pointed by page A, which is itself an important web page, we can assign a higher important score to page B. In some sense, there will be a flow of authority and importance from one web page to the other. In other words, web pages get their authority by being hyperlinked by trustworthy and important pages and make web pages they link to more authoritative and important. So Brin and Page developed a network algorithm to take into account this type of interaction and to assign an important score to every web page on any topic. They call this algorithm PageRank, which is a phenomenally good name. Not only it's a play of words on the surname of Larry Page, but it says what it does right in the name, ranking web pages. There would be so much more to tell about how page rank works, but this video is becoming quite technical already, so I will make a separate part 2 video in which I will focus on how the page rank algorithm works, why it is so good, and why it is so popular. So, for now, there you have it! The story of how the most valuable paper in history has come to be, and a little background on the World Wide Web at the end of the 90s. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and consider subscribing to the channel. It costs you nothing and it's super helpful and motivating for me. For those of you who are still listening, thanks for sticking along until now. I really appreciate it and I hope you have found this video interesting. Feel free to reach out to me on my social media accounts as well and also consider ringing the bell to be notified of new videos like this. They come out every week. Until next Sunday, goodbye!